All right, everyone's almost ready. Who would you like to bring from the Heron tribe? Raysan, for sure. Raysan, would you join us? Gladly, I'll give you everything I've got. All right, Tower of Guidance, here we come. It's so quiet. Is the goddess here? Mm-hmm. She's at the top. Be careful, everyone. This tower is Ashira's home territory. She's certain to have her most powerful troops waiting for us up ahead. We must proceed with utmost caution. So, you were companion to the very first Empress Altina. I am honored that you have chosen to speak with me. You would trust in the word of a stranger? Yes, I can see inside you. I know you cannot speak lies. Is it possible? Do you share some aspect of my power? I do as did my mother. Generation after generation, each apostle has been blessed to hear the voice of the goddess. We know of impending disasters, how crops will fare. All revelations originally intended for you. The children of my union with Altina. I had no idea. Please, look at this. That mark. All of the apostles have borne this brand. It is our greatest secret. The senators must never know. Because of this brand, I thought that I had been born of some great sin. It plagued me always. Guilt tore at me every day as I hid my mark from my people, deceiving them constantly about my true nature. Oh, child. How can I apologize to you? And yet now that I've met you, I understand. There is no shame in my heritage. None at all. I will not live in hiding. I will reveal to the world that I am one of the branded. They must see there is no shame in who I am. No, you mustn't. You don't understand the danger you will be placing yourself in. Oh, but I do. The Senators will do their utmost to rally the people against me, as they did when I freed the Lagoods from slavery. But I will not be deterred. If I am to lead this nation, I cannot allow it to be corrupted by prejudice and hatred. I can put the life the Goddess has given me to no greater good than this. Such determination. Your eyes, they very much resemble Altina's. I will stand before my people and proudly proclaim the truth. And then I will guide them to a just and honest future. This is my promise to you. Thank you. Your strength of will, the truth that guides your life. You have shown me the way back to myself. I shall return to Goldoa and tell my friends of you and your actions. I will tell them that Laguz and Bjork may once again live together in peace. I will tell them that there is hope. Thank you, father of my mothers. I strive to be worthy of the gift of life you have granted me. What was that? Someone's... Was it someone's memory? What is it? Sorry? Oh, I... Don't worry, it was nothing. All right then, our path leads through that door there. Here we go.
Oh, Steve, I've been there with the vertigo. I know what you mean. Hang in there, buddy. Be careful. Very, very careful. Well, well. Apostle Sanaki. What a surprise seeing you here. Frankly, I'm amazed that you, of all people, would dare to set foot inside the most holy tower of guidance. Lacane, we've been looking for you for a long time. You bound day into your awful pact, hounded noble King Peleus, and stole countless lives in your appalling war. You are beyond redemption. Beyond redemption? My, that does sound dreadful. Whatever will you do with me? Oh, and let me remind you, the blood pact is still in effect. You would do well to remember that. I think you know what will happen to the people of Dayan if you should dare oppose me. Enough. We fear your threats no longer. No more will we bow to your every whim. Now that we've found you, we will exact justice upon you, then destroy the blood pact itself, ending its power over us. So you figured it out, did you? Hm, <laughs> it matters not. This changes nothing. Do you hear me? Here is a scroll for which you've been searching so diligently, right here in my hands. Ah! And yet, none of you will ever lay one grimy little finger upon it. I have been blessed by the goddess herself. Her protection will not allow you fleas to even approach me. Lacane, cease this travesty of virtue at once. What have we here? Oh yes, the apostle. Excuse me, child, but I had completely forgotten you were here. Since you've deigned to grace us with your exalted presence, dear apostle, let me share a bedtime story with you. The year was 640 Banyan era. The empire had been without an apostle for 15 long years. The senators were being constantly harassed with complaints from the people. There had been nothing like it in history. The voices calling for young Sanaki to be crowned grew louder every day. You had just turned five years old when the Senate welcomed you to the throne as the new apostle. Ah, but my young mistress Sanaki. What the heck did I just do? What a difficult child you were. You threw tantrums. You screamed and cried constantly. Your conduct was hardly befitting an Empress of Banyan. Everyone was at a loss. You wouldn't even stop mewling and crying during official proceedings. But then along came our youngest senator ever, Sephirin, Duke of Persis. When he took you in his arms, you immediately stopped crying. You even smiled. We had to take advantage of this obvious miracle. In an unex unexpected, in an unprecedented move by the senators, we elevated Sephirin to prime minister, keeping him serving as close to you as possible. This plan, radical as it was, proved far more effective than we dared dream. A young, handsome prime minister and an adorable moppet of an apostle brought the people's support to incredible new heights. Apparently, the common citizenry is gullible enough to blindly follow any leader who is sufficiently attractive. Enamored as they were, no one ever seemed to care whether or not you could hear the voice of the goddess. With the new apostle and prime minister, the political landscape became unrecognizable. Even in the face of overtly unreasonable legislation, the two of you would stand on the balcony. A smile and a wave later, the people would cheer and go on with their happy lives. It was too good to be true, however. Both of you were only meant to be puppets. Each year you interfered with our government more and more, imposing your soft-hearted ideals over our sovereign rights. Were such triviality as Lagoo's slavery and the day and occupation worth making issues of? The pair of you were becoming an increasingly bothersome thorn in our side, and then this war against the Lagoo's forces. Thank you, Steve. 
You went so far as to expose our previous indiscretions and demand reparations for the subhumans. This was unforgivable. Clearly, you both had to be removed. Sephirin would be falsely accused and jailed, necessitating his removal from office. The Apostle would suffer a sudden illness and be excused from official proceedings, or so we intended. And somehow, despite the extraordinary plans of great men, here you are, standing before my very eyes. If Sephirin and I hadn't been freed, you were just waiting for your chance to kill us, just as you killed my grandmother? Out of respect for the imminently deceased, I'll be completely honest. Yes, you assume correctly. Your assassination and the plot to once again frame the Serenus Herons for it was entirely my idea. Yes, I thought as much. Impressive, Sanaki. When you were first crowned, you would have cried your little eyes out. You've grown. Slightly. Nice guy. Lacane, Duke of Gados, before the 37th Empress of Banyan, prepare to be judged. An amusing game, child. Truly. But you must know that there is nothing you can do against me. I am the greatest servant of the all-knowing, almighty Ashira. I am her chosen companion. And you, Sanaki, are a pathetic wretch, mewling behind her pack of day and curs. Ashira's judgment is upon you. You will not live to be turned to stone. You will die here as flesh and blood.